Now, let me try to illustrate it for you this way. I want you to imagine for a moment that this glass represents your life. It's hollow inside. There is a void that is here right in the central, central part of your life. This is what the, uh, the Bible tells us. Solomon writes that, that God has set eternity in the uh, heart of every person. In other words, there is a void in the heart of every person that really can only be satisfied by a relationship, a personal relationship with God. Now, people sometimes will try to fill this uh, void in their life with other things but it never quite fills all of the gaps. There, there's always something else that's there. And that's why Solomon, in that same book of Ecclesiastes, you'll, you'll hear him use the phrase many times, he'll say meaningless. Uh, he says, I tried to put a whole bunch of other things in here, and, and it was meaningless. St. Augustine said uh, 100 year, 400 years after the kind of the close of the New Testament, he said, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. It, it, we need only God to fill this exactly as it needs to be filled. A lot of us have blocked God's flow into our life by our sins. We've said, God, I, I'm, I'm in charge of my own life. I don't need you to come in here. I'll, I'll fill this up. Let me see what I can put in. Not you. I'm going to see what I can put in here. And they try to fill it. And it's very dissatisfying. It's very unfulfilling. But when we finally recognize our need for our Savior, what we realize is that Jesus' death on the cross that paid for my sins now removes the impediment and allows God to pour his life into me. And so when my sins have been forgiven, then God takes his Holy Spirit and he pours it into my life and he fills me with his Spirit. This void that before I tried to fill with other things, it's now been filled with the presence of God. Jesus showed up to his disciples right after he had been raised from the dead. They are still scared. They're still trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And so they've locked themselves away in a room. And Jesus shows in, shows up there, walks right through the locked door. And in John chapter 20, it records that Jesus goes, and he breathes on them, and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, what I think happened at that point was this, that his spirit filled this void in their life. But what do we read here? That wasn't the end. That wasn't the stopping point. In Acts chapter 1, he says, you have this, but don't leave Jerusalem. Stay here until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what happens is that is like taking our life and our life gets submerged into the Holy Spirit. And so now when you look, you no longer even see the life anymore. It sort of disappears in there. It's been overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. It is over it and under it and around it, and if possible, going through it. This is what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to be submerged into the Holy Spirit. That's why it is a baptism in, not just with, but it's in. We are taken deep into God's presence. 